All right, now we're ready to go into a time of questions and answers. Uh, Sergio, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Samuel, for, for this teaching. Uh, literally, um, well, not just this week, but for really the last two, three, four years, I believe that this, not in the words that you used, but the same idea has been something that I feel um, God has been really impressing upon me. And then even, especially of lately, you know, a, a lot of, th th there was a, a book from N.T. Wright that I was listening to recently. And one of the things he, he made the point of is that, I, I really like the analogy he used. He said, sometimes, he's talking about the four gospels. And he said, sometimes we'll turn up the volume on one part of the gospel and turn down another one, and then we don't get the music that it's all supposed to make together. Um, we don't hear it right because we're overemphasizing one part and underemphasizing or even completely turning off another. And um, the the idea of commitment to God and to Jesus, um, there's a an idea that kind of has been resonating, that, and I literally mentioned it to my daughters, and I, I had been planning to teach it to them. Um, in the coming weeks, which is that there, there is no invitation from Christ that does not involve commitment. Um, and so what you said today, or a lot of the things that you said today, really beautifully go along with that idea. Uh, and, and, and I've, I've always, I, I think a lot of Christians, for sure, myself included, have been, what is the fear of God? And like, I, I really like what you pointed out at the beginning. There's a lot of verses that talk about its importance and its effects, but not a lot of verses that clearly define it. So that was a really good point that you made. Uh, but I think you did a really, really great job uh, illu illuminating its, um, its meaning with a lot of the scriptures that you brought out. I really like, especially the uh, the idea that you said about taking it seriously and not treating it carefully. Um, I liked th that. Really made a lot of sense for me, um, especially the verse where you says that God that we're wonderfully and fearfully made. You know, it's it's. I've tried to get out of the habit of just repeating scriptures that I don't understand, <laughs> yeah. and one of those is that one. I'm fearfully made. What in the it, it, one day it hit me? It's like, oh, that sounds so beautiful. But what in the world does that mean? <laughs> I have it doesn't like fearfully made. What does that even mean? Like it sounds so just a, a, a weird. We don't use the word that way. At least I've never used the word that way. But it's a very very interesting thing that I, that I, uh, for me to consider and think about that he carefully made David. That he carefully makes each of us. That's um. That's a really, really interesting way of, of looking at that. And it it makes a lot of sense to me. Um, so definitely one of the speakers, so to speak, in in the music, so to speak, that the scripture makes that needs to be turned up in Christianity, at least here in the U.S. for sure, um, is that there needs to be some seriousness. And I think, I, I know for me, it's like it's, I have one speaker on or the other. It's like, I, I think before the last few years, especially, I guess, because especially a lot of Christian music has this problem where they talk about the grace of God and his mercy, and that's turned way up. But then the seriousness that we need to have, the, the fear of God is kind of like just turned off. And it's kind of like, I have one speaker on or the other, not right. both at the same time. We definitely need his mercy. We're definitely not going to, um be perfect but at the same time we do need to take our commitment to him and his commandments uh seriously so um I, there was just I, I not only the scriptures you shared and the understandings but a lot of the analogies i really loved also the one about the chef using fire i thought that was a really good one um th there was just a lot of really good analogies um that really brought some um, clarification so thank you so much yeah, thank you, Sergio. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I definitely try and, or I don't even know if it's, I, I do try intentional about trying to come up with good analogies, but oftentimes it's just because I'm seeking understanding myself, like, oh, I'm trying to make sure that it makes sense to me. 
Um, and yeah, you're definitely right. Talking about, you know, culture, uh, not cultural Christianity, casual, casual Christianity, right? Where for a lot of people, church, being a Christian is going to church on Sundays, right? Um, it, in fact, it reminds me, there was a, a pastor who he used to be the, the pastor of a mega church. And if you hear this um, pastor, at least from his speech, you can tell that he's a man that really does fear God. And he 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 came across uh, somebody who used to be a, a member of his church and, and then left. And he asked him, hey, like, why'd you leave? And he said, well, you know, before I became a Christian, I um, he, he became a Christian and this was his first church. So he said, hey, before I became a Christian, I used to be a, a member in a gang. And I thought that becoming a Christian was going to be like the same thing. I, got, I thought I was going to be 24 seven. I didn't know that becoming a Christian was just going to church for half an hour or an hour and a half on Sundays. And that was it. And so this pastor said that that just made him sick that that's what his members at his church had become. Like, it's just being a Christian, instead of being like in a gang where it's 24 seven, you're always with people, you're always connected, you're always on mission. It was just a, a club that you went to once once a week. So definitely uh, we need to have that seriousness, that commitment, like you mentioned. Um, and yeah, so I thank you, appreciate your comments. Um, Paul. Thank you very much, First Samuel. I thought that was a, Really good presentation and uh, teaching there and a, and a good reminder because it is so easy just during our day to day to to just yeah forget to fear him uh, and and just go with the go with the flow really and and uh, yeah and just or even just think of the the love part of 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 uh, of what he's. Um, spoken to us through Jesus and through prophets and so on. So, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with that. And as it says, uh, fear is the beginning of wisdom. And uh, it also says in, in also also thought about a verse in Luke, which I, I, th I thought was very appropriate when he said, but I will warn you to whom to fear, fear him who after he is killed, has authority to cast you into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Because, uh, I mean, obviously God chose to save us or to give us the opportunity to be saved. And what we do with that opportunity is up to us, you know. Uh, and just because we are not struck down every time we do something wrong, it's he, he wants everyone to come to the faith and believing. So we are given that chance. So, and there will be a judgment day where the goat and the sheep will be separated. So, and we've got to fear, fear that one and what, what will happen on that day. So we've got to try our best every day. And I think that is the beginning of Western because once you think about that, then uh, obedience flow from that and, uh, and, uh, further understanding and so on flows from that and uh, you you take it seriously as you say you take it seriously so thank you so much for that i thought that was that was very good teaching yeah thank you paul yeah it's interesting as you were um talking right there when you mentioned the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom um it just sort of sort of clicked in my mind of like um and you mentioned judgment day right um imagine if at the end of you know you lived your whole life as a mechanic and at the end of your life, you're going to be judged by how good of a cook you are. You thought, oh, well, I, I wasted my life then. I wasted all my efforts. I should have done something different. Well, I mean, imagine if you, you know, the Bible tells us that on, on judgment day, we're going to be judged for how we lived our lives. And so fearing God and taking that seriously, it's it, it would cause us to, to, to adjust and to say, okay, now I know where I need to focus. Now I know what my priority should be in my life. And so that's a really great point. Uh, thank you. Uh, Rosalind? Thank you. Yeah, um, I also thought this was really good. Um, yeah, that, you know, we should should be fearful of um, making mistakes or, yeah, sinning and the consequences. Um, and uh, I was reminded of this one verse. Uh, related to your topic, um, which is in First John four eighteen, where it says, "There is no fear in love, 
that perfect love casts out fear. For well, fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been affected in love. And I thought, you know, that's so true because none of us have been perfected in love yet. So we should, we should have uh, a sense of fear at times um, because we're still um, making mistakes. Um, and yeah, so I think, I think that this was, um, yeah, very, very good teaching. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Rosalind. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, you know, you have you have Paul, um, where he says, I think First Corinthians that I um I discipline my body to make sure that, you know, I'm basically to make sure that I make it. <laughs> and so he had he had that awareness, like just because I'm a Christian, just because I'm an elder, just because I'm an apostle, doesn't mean that I've made it. Right. I, I need yeah. to 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 take care to make sure that 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 in the end I am rewarded with eternal life. Um, and so that's what your comment uh, reminded me of. Thank you, um, uh, Suzanne. Yeah, so many great thoughts here. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Brought to mind a couple things um, um, where Paul talks about how we should work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Of course, that sort of seems in the context to be more about seriously being afraid, <laughs> like we should be afraid of, of being um, so haughty and so prideful that we set ourselves up above God's precepts. And um, I think I said in Jude where it talks about how, um, you know, the angels didn't dare um, do, cert do a certain thing, but, you know, because they were afraid, you know, they, they, they said, let the Lord rebuke you. You know, and it and it just it just shows this sort of climate of being aware of our position in relation to God, like don't get too big for your boots, kind of thing. Um, the other thing, <clears throat> excuse me, that I thought about because um, they did a huge study in um, um, Jeremiah uh, in seminary, and um, I just love. I had, actually yeah, I had to memorize this whole passage, which was so it really sticks in my mind. But Jeremiah thirty two, thirty six through forty one. <clears throat> it's very interesting because it's where Yahweh promises to return his people from exile and how he is going to do it by rejoicing over them and doing good to them and planting them in the land and faithfulness with all his heart and all his soul, showing God's heart to restore his people from exile. But they, he drove them away in his wrath and anger and great indignation because they had disobeyed him and they had forgotten him and they didn't fear him. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what's really interesting is that when he says he'll bring them back to this place and make them dwell in safety in verses 38 um, and 39, he says, and they shall be my people and I will be their God and I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me forever. And then he says this for their own good and the good of their children after them. And he'll make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from doing good to them. And I will put the fear of me in their hearts that they will not turn from me. And I, I think that's so profound because <clears throat> part of the restoration of the relationship between him and his people was based on the need for God to actually put the fear of him in their hearts for their own good and for the good of their children. And it would prevent them from turning away from him again. And I know this is kind of a weird thing, but I often pray to God to help me um, have that fear put in my heart, my the fear of him, the fear of disobeying him, from turning from him, so that it will be <clears throat> a kind of a compass or a, a, a guide for me to keep me on the straight and narrow. Yeah, that's a, a really good point. And that's, I think, something that I wanted to mention, I think somewhere in my lesson, but I just forgot. Uh, you know, trying to keep track of so many things that like the uh, there are definitely some times where um, the fearing God and being afraid of him are going to look or feel very similar, if not exactly the same. Um, and that we should have that. So like the there are oftentimes in the Bible, fear and trembling, it's put together. Um, and so, 
Yeah, no, that that makes a lot of sense. And I, I think that's absolutely a- appropriate. Um, and yeah, you're absolutely right about about how fearing God is something that that benefits us and how it's for our good. And again, it's from t- not turning away from our God. At Nexus 2020, it says, you know, the passage that I put in my presentation, um, don't be afraid, uh, do not fear. God has come to test you. That is fear may be before you that you may not sin. And so there Moses tells the people, hey, God wants the, his fear to be before you so that you may not sin. Um, so definitely. Um, yeah, no, those are some some really, really good and awesome thoughts. Thank you. Um, well, on the recording, this is going to be it. If you joined us and you would like to jump online to be in discussion with us, we would encourage you to do that and reach out to us. Thank you and God bless. <laughs>